Hello, and welcome to the Amazon Simple Email Service Deliverability Learning Series. My name is Matt Strzelecki, and I am the Senior Deliverability Manager for Amazon SCS. I help customers with endpoint deliverability, which is making it to the recipient mail server and delivering the message, but possibly to a spam folder or another folder other than the inbox. And I primarily focus on inbox deliverability, which is making it to the recipient inbox. Amazon SES is a cloud email service provider that can integrate into any application for bulk email sending. Senders from small startups to large enterprise accounts can use SES to reach their customers, but getting those messages to a customer inbox can be tricky. Understanding deliverability best practices and what mailbox providers expect from bulk senders is the key to getting messages to a customer's inbox. Today we're going to be talking about bounces. We'll discuss what they are, how to keep them from your active mailing list, and what to do if you start seeing higher bounce rates. First, what are bounces? Bounces are primarily the result of a response from a recipient mail server or an inability to connect to a recipient mail server or mail exchange. Reasons recipient mail servers might be rejecting or throttling messages include things like incoming mail policy, throughput and volume limits, engagement performance, and sending to too many invalid email addresses. Because of the variance of bounce reasons, senders should monitor SMTP responses that come back from the recipient mail servers. In a typical SMTP transaction, a sender reaches out to the recipient mail server to see if a recipient exists, and if they do, they will then send the message to that address. If the address does not exist, the recipient mail server will tell the sender that the user does not exist, and that will result in an SMTP bounce message. In this case, it's typically a 550 no such user exists type of message. This is a situation in which the recipient mail server is telling the sender that the address does not exist, so they will not accept the message. You can see in the two examples, the first went through as the recipient existed, and the recipient domain acknowledged that the address existed, whereas the second message, the recipient mail server is saying that the user mailbox does not exist and sent a 550 SMTP response back. If you're seeing bounces when you send mail, it could have a direct correlation with how you have historically built your email list along with how you manage them long term. The best practice is to organically build an email list and allow recipients to directly opt in to the mailing list by confirming their opt in with a closed loop opt in confirmation. This consists of sending an email with a confirmation link to the recipient who is signing up for your mailing list and the person giving explicit permission to send them on an ongoing basis by the recipient clicking on the confirmation link. This is also a great, great way to keep invalid recipients off your mailing list. Consistent counts and large ratios of invalid email addresses to a recipient mail server shows that the sender does not use the best practice when building or managing lists, and this will negatively impact the sender's reputation to that recipient mail server. Now we're going to go into a few of the different bounce classifications and what they mean to you as a sender. Typically, if they are in the 500 level, it means they are permanent bounces and you should not retry them at this time. These can be the result of a mail server blocking a sender for a variety of reasons. These reasons can include things like poor domain or IP reputation, sending too many messages too quickly, users complaining about the messages at a high rate, or even not having proper authentication records like SPF or DKIM. If they are 400 level bounces, you typically want to retry these messages as these can be indications of mailbox availability issues that may be temporary. It is important to review the response information because the recommendation may be to retry at a later time. For example, you may get a SMTP response that states to retry in four hours due to a spike in volume or complaints. 400 level bounces may happen as a result of throttling and deferring, but can also be an indication that the recipient mail server you're trying to reach is down, unavailable, but may be available at a later time. Let's take a look at some specific SMTP bounces. First, let's look at the invalid recipient bounce. When you send a request to a recipient mail server and the address does not exist in their system, they will send back an error similar to this invalid recipient bounce. It is important to keep your invalid recipient rate low as high invalids can contribute to reduce sender reputation. Next is an example of a message that was blocked with a 550 SMTP response code because the sender was not authenticating with SPF or DKIM. This is a great example of looking at the bounce which identified the problem and once SPF or DKIM is implemented, the messages will likely pass through to the recipient on the next attempt. Another example is this 554 bounce for policy reasons. Many SMTP responses can be broad, but they are all indicators that the recipient mail server does not like something about either your list, the content, or the responses by the users to your messages. 
In this case, the policy could have been a breach in a threshold for a metric like complaints. Typically, a mailbox provider will have a postmaster page with reasons for certain SMTP responses. This is generally the best place to start your review on how to align with their email policies to deliver messages to their users. At times, mailbox providers ingest data feeds from security companies and third-party resources that include some high-impact real-time block list, otherwise known as RBLs. The next example shows that messages are being blocked by a mailbox provider based on the public RBL listing. This typically happens as a result of spam trap hits or users' complaints to these services about a particular sender. Senders may be mindful of these types of listings as they can cause deliverability issues across many mailbox providers, not just one. The last example we have today is from a throttling bounce with a 421 SMTP code. It is indicating that messages are being deferred due to volume spikes and or user complaints. More information on the bounce code and how this particular mailbox provider views those codes is available in the link included in the bounce message. This is common and a great starting point for figuring out why your message is bounced and what you can do to mitigate the bounce for the future sends. Now we're going to chat about what to do when you start seeing higher counts of any of these bounce types. Let's start with invalid recipient bounces. When you're receiving high invalid recipient bounces, it indicates either bad list building or bad long-term list hygiene. To help reduce consistent invalid recipient bounces, you should make sure all recipients are confirmed opt-in to ensure that the address exists and you get the confirmation click from the email to know that they are a real person explicitly opting into your mailing list. It is also a good exercise to remove inactive recipients from your mailing list, especially if you are sending on a daily or high frequency cadence. This will also help prevent spam traps from getting and staying on your active mailing list. Now let's go over throttling bounces. When you're receiving high levels of throttles, it means the mailbox provider or recipient mail server sees something it doesn't like about your messaging. That could be the frequency, the volume, recipient responses, content, or even your sender reputation. Looking at the SMTP response is the best way to understand why the throttling happened in the first place and what to look for in order to mitigate it. You should also look at recent changes in your mailing list if there were any additions to the mailing list along with any sending volume or cadence changes which could contribute to the throttling bounces. You do want to address throttling as it begins because oftentimes the next enforcement step is blocking messages. This can be much more difficult to mitigate and those blocks will not be retried whereas most throttle bounces can be retried and eventually successfully delivered. The last category of bounces we're going to discuss is the block bounce. When you're receiving block bounces, you most certainly should go to the SMTP response message and review. Oftentimes, if the block is sudden on messages that normally had higher deliverability with good engagement and low spam complaints, this could be the result of something in the content like links that may be on some type of filter list or an RBL that the mailbox provider uses. Now, if the blocking is more gradual in that you started to see a reduction in engagement and then started to see throttling bounces and then ultimately block bounces, it could be a more holistic problem with your list, content, or general sender reputation. Getting up to date on the best practices for list building and long-term list hygiene is your first step to improving your deliverability and reducing both throttling and block bounces in the future. Understanding your recipient mailbox provider and its rules for delivering successfully to their users is also a key to consistent inbox deliverability and reducing bounces long term. Most times when you've identified what may have caused the block and addressed that issue, continuing to send using best practices for that mailbox provider should eventually lead to improved deliverability. But there will be times where you will need out to reach out to the provider via a support form and have the block removed. In conclusion, bounces are a communication mechanism in the email world and are used by recipient mail servers to communicate with senders on why a bounce may have occurred and what actions senders can take to mitigate the bounces. Most bounces are an indication that something unusual or at times bad is coming from your mail servers, so it's prudent to take immediate action when you see them. Some bounces can be resolved with a simple form submission in addition to following best practices for list building and management. But other times, bounces can require a sender to change their approach to list and how they send long term. They will need to align with the recipient mail server's expectations of senders and align with their best practices. This is the end of the Amazon SES email deliverability learning series focused on bounces. Please look for our next deliverability learning series video which will cover the topic of email complaints. 
I hope this video has helped you better understand what bounces are and how to reduce them long term. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Thank you for your time.